Hello, everybody. Welcome. Well, um, before anything, I just want to let you know this is going to be recorded. Um, so yeah, you're probably going to get a message that say uh, that you got it. Uh, my name is Adela. I'm going to um, introduce myself uh, in a second. So I just want to welcome everybody um, to Keys to Success in e-commerce. Um, if you have any questions, um, please use the chat or uh, we, I'm going to, at the end of this webinar, I'm going as well to do like a little bit of questions. Uh, anything you want to ask me, please feel free. Also, if you don't understand any, any concept or something, feel free as well to stop me because I want you to understand everything. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna give you as well a little bit of activities. Um, probably we are not gonna have the time to do it together, uh, but I really uh, encourage you to do all the activities because um, they are gonna help you to, uh, I don't know if you already have an e-commerce idea or business. Um, if you don't, this is perfect because uh, it's going to uh, help you basically from scratch. So yeah, this just a little bit to let you know to interact with Zoom. Uh, you can use the chat. Um, if you see that I'm because I'm talking, I don't see this chat uh, as well. You can uh, you can let me know at the end uh, when any questions. So about the speaker, which is me, my name is Adela. I'm the founder of Gimme Cocos. That's my e-commerce business. Uh, I am very passionate, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial woman, originally from Spain. I came to Australia five years ago. Um, I'm actually a lawyer back in Spain. However, I was never passionate about uh, law and being a lawyer. So I left everything behind and I just follow my, my heart, basically. I, I came here following my dreams. And yeah, and I'm committed to uh, made and come true. So I want to create a community of conscious and empowered, motivated people that feel fulfilled and passionate about what they are doing, because I truly know um, that there is a lot of people, and, I, and that was me five years ago, which we don't love what we do. Um, and I truly think that this is just because uh, lack of information or, law, or knowledge or even in believing in ourselves. Um, so that for sure can change. So I am here to tell you, yes, you can change um, and you can do anything uh, you really want to do. So let's connect. If uh, this is my Instagram, please feel free to follow, to message me. And this is also my business Instagram. If you want to support all my business or see what we are doing, um, you can uh, also follow in here. And then this uh, is um, the Academy of Entrepreneur um, Instagram and Paula Mills, which is uh, the uh, boss of Academy of Entrepreneur. She's the founder. And she also put, uh, put a lot of um, tips about entrepreneurship in her social media. So you can definitely connect with her as well. Yeah, if you, if you wanna record something, take a screenshot, you can tag with this hashtag as well today. Well, the agenda today. We have a few little things uh, to talk about. Um, so I will make sure that we cover everything. The first one and for me is the most important one and I will explain you why is the mindset. Uh, second topic is gonna be winning product and branding. Uh, then the third topic is about suppliers, um, which in my experience was one of the hardest thing when I was starting the business, finding a good supplier. And then the topic four it will be how to create your store. And topic five, marketing. Uh, we will speak a little bit about influencer, how to collaborate and, and work with them, and also Facebook ads. About mindset. There are 7.6 7 billion people in the world. So with this, what we need to think is like, 
there are so many potential customers. We just need to create the right product that they need. There is always people that are going to need our products. So it's more about identifying who they are and how to find them more than believing in, ah, oh, no, I, my, my product is not good enough or I'm not going to, there is too much uh, uh, already um, people doing this or there is so many companies. It's like, instead of thinking like that, think always big. There is so many people for sure we are going to find somebody and a lot of people that are interested, you know, on what we are doing. And this is a fact. Before COVID-19, the forecast for retail, global retail, was that it will expand by 4.4% in, uh, in 2020. However, for e-commerce, it was amazing because those figures, basically, instead of being 4.4, it was actually in e-commerce was 18.4, which is massive growth. Um, it was an extra of $4 trillion in sales. Actually, 2020 was a great year for e-commerce and 2021 as well. When the whole world was panicking and, and many businesses closed and a lot of businesses struggled, for e-commerce was really, really good year um, and same last year. It was a, a year of growth and, and yeah, like it's the best opportunity that we have uh, right now because um, it's not only... Um, I believe that is not only because um, the pandemic, but also the pandemic, what it did is accelerate what it was already coming. Like a lot of people, they were afraid before to buy online. And, and majority, like old people, they were more afraid to buy online because it's something that they didn't know how to do or they didn't trust. But COVID made them like when every shop was closed, if they wanted to buy something, it had to be online. And people spend much more time on, uh, online and social media as well. So I think that what that this what it did basically is accelerate what it was supposed to happen later on. And now there are more and more people that they buy online because they go used to thanks to the pandemic and and we still like e-commerce still growing and growing, which is very good for everybody to jump in and, and launch an e-commerce business, in my opinion. In e-commerce, 66% of shopping uh, occasions begin online, and then 50% of consumer shops are in mobile, more even than in store. So People don't even need to get a computer anymore to actually make a purchase. The majority of the purchases, and I see this on my website, are, are even with the phone. I'm, I'm now in the phone, so it means that it can be at any time of the day, in a break uh, when they are working or, I don't know, at nighttime, they, at morning when they wake up. So customers are getting used to buy online really, really um easily, which is great. Instagram has 1 billion people using it every day, which is crazy, it's a lot of people. And 72% of the user report that they make purchase decisions based on something that they saw on Instagram, which means every common business has to be on Instagram. And we need to make sure that our Instagram page looks really good and that we are very active on social media because, um, yeah, we get a lot of stuff thanks to Instagram and Facebook as well. But Instagram is a little bit, I think, depending on younger and, and more impulsive. And then it's Facebook, which it can be a little bit more older at the moment. Um, in my experience, and my reason, because we can study all the data, and I see this that on Facebook I get customers with uh, like older than on Instagram. The mindset, I think this is the first thing you have to work and it never stops. So the having the right mindset is what is gonna not only uh help you start it but also when things get difficult or things get uh on a way that you never thought that it would be or harder that you thought is is what is going to keep you going so for me for example my my mindset why i started with e-commerce was uh to 
basically two things. Well, I wanted freedom. I love traveling so much. Before the pandemic, I used to travel minimum five countries per year. Um, I was traveling a lot. So I wanted to have the freedom to just have a computer and be able to make an office anywhere in the world. I can do an office in, in any beach. I just need like Wi-Fi on my phone and I can connect with the computer and that's my office. So that was one of my, um, my basically my goals that I wanted to achieve. That was one of my reasons, and then uh, fulfillment. I wanted to feel my, like my own business to make me feel fulfilled because I realized that I was born to be my own boss. Like I never felt when I work for somebody else, I never felt they like motivated because it was like um, not for me. I always felt no, this is not for me. I want to make my own decisions, and I know that uh, I was born to be a boss, basically. I was born to be an entrepreneur. And you feel that, you know that. And then this phrase as well is something that I, I truly, truly love because when it became true, um, it, it is just, I can't even describe it. So this phrase, if you don't find a way to make money when you sleep, you will be working until you die. And it's so true. And now because I have customers from, all over the world. So they buy maybe when I'm sleeping or when I'm having a dinner with a friend. And I always think in, in Warren Buffett in this phrase because it is such a good feeling that you are not working at that moment literally and you are making money uh, because people are buying your product. So this is something that for me was a must achieve in my life that I don't make money only per hour that I'm working, but also. Uh, when I'm sleeping. So I would say since, since the beginning, before even you're starting any idea, just focus on your goal, on your personal goal in life. So write your outcome and write it like clear, as much clear, get clear um, because clarity is power. So get as much clear as you can. For me, my goal freedom and I grow why all the reasons why I wanted freedom, abundance and fulfillment. So I grow everything. Um, and that was over two years ago and um, three years ago that I, I have all and when things get difficult, I just go to those pages and I read again why? Why did I start this? Um and and that is something that it gives you energy and gives you a different um, perspective to keep going. So I highly recommend you to start with this because if you know your outcome, um, it doesn't matter how difficult things get, you just always find a way to keep going. Take action. This is something that, um, that is basically the, the lack of um, success of people because they don't take action. They say that I'm gonna do, 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 and then they don't do. So if you basically work on your mindset, which is 80%, uh, and, the, and this is a statistic, 80% of successful people, 100% um, of the successful people say that 80% is mindset and 20% is work, but you actually need to take action, which is what a lot of people don't, go, don't do. And I, I believe as well that is for the same reason, the mindset, because they don't have the uh, right goals, right outcome, they ended up doing doing. So it was everything connected in my opinion. These are some books that I highly recommend you to read if you haven't read them yet. And they basically change my, uh, whole mindset and the way that I not always um, not, not only affect my business but also me because I am my business so um, everything is start within basically within you so the secrets are the mirror mind it's very very good for uh, changing the mindset with uh, and the relationship with money and the way that you um, use the money um, so yeah if you want to take a screenshot of this I highly recommend you to Maybe you buy one and then when you finish, get the, the next one. Okay, so let's get now into e-commerce. So winning product and branding. My um, best advice that I can give you is seeing what is already working and do it in a better way. Find a way to make it better. And if it's something that you are passionate about that you already have and you love and you believe um, 
I wish that is in another color. I wish that it does this thing. I, and if you have a product and you are thinking that you wish that it could be a little bit better in somehow, that is the product that I would say go with because um, you want to go with something that is already working because it's going to give you the clue that there is the market for it. You want to make sure that there are customers for it because if you do something really um, that nobody knows, or something really new that that is very um, yeah very new in the market, um, is risky because it can be first more expensive to create and, and it's going to take you longer, and second, if you are going to be the first trial, so you are going to be the one trying if the market actually exists because that a product is really good doesn't mean that the market wants it. So if you don't have the any data to reset to do the research and, and realize if this actually there is a market for it or not, is you are gonna be the one doing those analy and analysis and data and then you're gonna get competitors. So I would highly recommend you to um to basically trying to see okay what am I passionate about, what I'm good at and what product do I think that I can make better. And something that you can be better, it can be um for example you have an experience with a product that you love or service, um, and then the customer service is really bad. And you see all the comments are complaining about the customer service. So you can create this product, find a way to make it even better somehow, and then give the best customer service. So you are gonna be outstanding. You're gonna be much better than your competitor. For product criteria, when you are finding a product, um, I would recommend that you find that there is high demand. So there are a lot of people that want to buy this product and that there is existing competition. I'm not saying too much, like not too many competitors, but if you have two, three competitors, that is good. Two, three uh, competitors that they are um, making a lot of money, that's a good sign because he's telling you, okay, there is a market for it. There are people actually buying this product. And you just need to find what can you do better than these companies, than this competition. Because a lot of people are always concerned about competition and they want to be unique and, and that there is no competition. Today, is, even if you don't have competition today, you will have it tomorrow. Um, Guarantee you just need to see a brand that is very successful. Suddenly there is there is a few competitors. Um, so I don't believe that competition is a bad thing. I see I, I see competition as a conspiracy to uh, to improve each other. To how can we do better? And you always need to think how can we do better for all customers. Then uh, the next criteria, it would be uh, low availability on the market, which is like quite new or in trend. You don't want to go to a, with a product that, that is everywhere because that's going to be much harder. Um, then you need to find a good, uh, do, do your math and know your numbers since the beginning and make sure that the uh, profit margin per unit is very good and minimum, minimum, minimum $25 and that's little, but that's minimum. Um, and then with this profit, I mean like 100% profit, like you need to count with taxes. If you had to pay tax, you had to count with uh, shipping, you had to count with marketing costs, um, warehouse costs, all this you, is a cost. So um, your work, that's a cost. So when I say $25 profit margin of the product, you have to really uh, discount all the costs. Um, then a great product always needs to solve a problem at value somehow. So because people are going to buy for the motion that uh, for the motion of this all the uh, solution. So if they have a problem and your product is going to fix it, that's going to be a very good reason for a customer to buy. And the same for adding value. If the customer can clearly see the value that your product is adding into their life, they are going to buy from you. Then the next product criteria is uh, the weight, um, less than one kilogram. Is the idea because 
Shipping is very expensive, especially when you are starting and you don't send many packages, then it will get cheaper. But at the beginning, when you are starting, shipping get, um, can get quite expensive. So you don't want to um, lose a lot of income from that. So less than one kilo is best, um, unless that your product is very expensive. So of course, if your product is expensive, you can charge more for it and, and that will be different. But if your product uh, is not um, that expensive, try to find out a light product. And then the last thing it will be uh, check Google Trends. That's a very good way to make sure that your uh, industry um, it's growing and not dying because if it's dying you don't want to get in there um, and a very good way to check that is in trends.google so this is the first activity so in here if you're thinking of reading a product or even look for a product that you have that you recently bought and then you can check here the industry you can check uh, the product itself and it's going to show you the graph about you can check the last um, year, the last few months, the last five years. So you can see, and I would recommend you go at least three years, three, five years, and see the graph. If you see that a product is growing, that or the industry is growing, that is a very good sign because it means more and more people are searching for it. So it's definitely a good opportunity, good business opportunity. Um, however, if the opposite, if you see that the, when you search the product that you think that it would be a good idea, or you search the industry and it's, um, and the graph is going down through, uh, like uh, from before, like five years ago was in trend and now it's going down, I would never get in, in, into that product or industry because it truly means that it's dying. People are not interested, for whatever reason, people are not interested anymore in that. Uh, product or industry. So you want to go into an industry that is growing. Um, and if it's, if you see that the graph is all kind of equal, um, in that case, I will have to see um, truly if it's because there is always a lot of demand of it. Um, it will tell you the numbers. Oh, yes, because it's like a type of product that that is always kind of same, but it's not going up anywhere either. So in that, I will have to do, I will have to do more research to, in, to make a decision. But if, if I can advise you something, it would be always trying to go for a, something that is on trend, that is growing. So yeah, if you want to um, do this later, we highly recommend you play around. Even you can save this, and whenever you have ideas, you can check. Uh, yes, you have to go to trend.google.com. Then about branding, branding is such an important thing, especially because uh, online stories like all shop, right? So like if you if you go to a shop on uh, a shopping mall how it looks is so important. There is always a massive team behind making sure that the store is um, a, is is good. Uh, it's good looking that, that people are gonna want to buy as soon as they get in. And I'm telling from the experience, I, I used to work as a DAS, visual measure DAS when I arrived to Zara. And that was my job to make the store appealing uh, for customers as soon as they get in, uh, they buy. And we will even study um, by, by sales. We will check the sales the, the week before, the day before, and we will see what, what um, collections are selling best and we will put it in the entrance. And then we will remove what is not selling that well and we will put something new. So it was a lot of work and, and it's not like um, a store just put the display and that's it. There is a lot of work and, and numbers behind that. So we have to think in the same way but with our store online because this is the only way that a customer can see our product and our, our brand. So we need to make sure that they trust us. That's first, that they see that we are serious, that they can trust us. And second, the photos and everything looking so good that they actually want to buy. Mm, because in time you see some e-commerce stores that they are really bad. And, and I don't know if the problem might be good, but I don't want to buy because 
um, it just doesn't look good, right? So um, for website and if a logo design, which will be like the first step, and also here you can do anything as well. Um, I recommend you up Fiverr and up Upwork. Um, if you want to find somebody to do your logo or your website design, um, very affordable because you can find there all the ranges of prices and there is people from all over the world, which is really good because uh, we are in Australia and in Australia it's, it's quite expensive to pay someone to do this type of thing. But um, if you use Fiverr or Apple, you can hire somebody from South America or from India or from other countries um, and they are going to do it much cheaper. And then Canvas, if you want to do it yourself, I use a lot of Canva, can only without Canvas. I highly recommend you to open the account here and play around with it because uh, I am not a designer and, and just with Canva, you can get so creative and it saves you a lot of money too. I really enjoy it. Um, so yeah, this will be Canva. You can register for free, free account and you can create a new design. So that would be the second activity of the day. I want you to do a logo. If you don't have the name, don't worry. Put any name that you can think of. Um, it's just to play around and get creative. So in here, this is how Canva looks. So in here, you can uh, uh, look for template and then you can design your own logo super easy, literally in five minutes. My logo, I did, it, I did in Canvas a few years ago and still I have that one because I like it and now that it is even improved much more you can it has you can do videos anything now all my social media I post any everything I do here all the design brochures everything it's an income because it's so easy all right so now let's talk about suppliers which for me was definitely my, uh, I think the hardest thing, yeah, when I was starting. Because when you are starting, you, uh, of course, you, you don't want to risk, you don't want to order too many. So that's going to be a challenge with, when you want the customized product, I'm not going to lie. So you just need to negotiate and keep going until you find a, a supplier that is going to support you. Um, I found this supplier and since then I just want to work with her. Her quality is amazing and she support me since day one. So um, yeah, I, I'm, now is when a lot of suppliers reach me out because they want to sell me their products. And I'm like, no, I probably contacted you at the beginning because I contact a lot of suppliers and nobody <laughs> helped me. So I keep with my supplier. Um, so this is two platforms that you can find um, suppliers. They are from different countries. Um, and also you can find a lot of ideas about products in here. One option that you can do, I never, I, I, I don't recommend you to do this at the moment if the shipping times are very long, but you can do it with suppliers locally. And for finding suppliers local in Australia, use Google. Um, my, if you want to start a watch company, watch manufacturer in Sydney um, or near me, and then you can contact all of them. Don't do this if it's going to take too long, because before the pandemic, uh, blind drug shipping was very good, because basically what it is, is you don't have to make an order before you um, you sell it. So what it does is you put the products on the website, you, you start selling them. And when you get the orders from the customer, you send it to the supplier, the order, and the supplier, and you pay the supplier, and the supplier will send directly to the customer. Of course, blind means nothing. You don't want the manufacturing name or anything like that um, in the packaging. So you will ask them to do it blind. Um, this was really good before, like if you buy from a lot of business, they will do it from China and then China will send the packages to the customer. However, now with this current situation, deliveries are taking way too long. So you don't want to start selling products and get a lot of bad reviews because the product take two months in a, uh, or one month to arrive. So, only do this if you can find a good supplier in 
yours um, near you, basically, that in the same country that it can, um, in Australia, that it can uh, send the product to the customer. Always before you make an order, and this is um, um, this is for every supplier. Doesn't matter what it is. You have to ask for a sample and tell them to do um, the sample with your logo and to check the quality, the packaging. You need to make sure that before you buy at a lot amount, you need to make sure that the product is what you want to be like. It's the standard, the high quality. It's everything because you need to you need to make sure that the product is very good. Um, and then as well, when you order this sample, you can use it for marketing purposes. You can start making your first photos and videos so you can launch the, um, the product on the website. So the activity, the next activity, it will be to um, go to AliExpress or Alibaba, both as very good and you can create a fair account and then you can find products there that they call it hot products that they are selling a lot you can check out there a lot of ideas for product and then um one thing that i highly recommend you to do is um check the right rating make sure that the sellers are very good and that they have been at least three years because you don't want new manufacturers that nobody knows and you don't know how to trust you prefer sellers that have been minimum three years on the platform this is basically how it will look you can do aliexpress or alibaba and then if you already have the product and or and you want to contact them my advice always um make yourself look like you are bigger because it's going to be much easier than I learned that so that you already have the business and that you're going to buy a lot, but you just need a sample. And then you can negotiate more when they see you big that when you are like, I'm just starting, I just want 20 units. <laughs> so um, if you want them to listen to you and, and negotiate more, um, always try, like relationship is key. It's very important that, of course, you uh, you create this space of relationship and also um yeah, also like trying to make yourself look a little bigger and know that you didn't start yet. And then how to create a store. I use Shopify, I highly recommend Shopify because it's very easy. Um, had no experience before um, and I'm not a developer and I could definitely do, um, I did my Shopify store and I could do many others because it's very easy, everybody can do it. Um, so for um, Shopify, what I recommend is go to other brands that are in your niche or which is like your industry or your competitors and get inspiration from the other brands store. You need to look, okay, which the color that they're using, the font, don't necessarily copy, but look what they are really doing that is working and get inspiration from that. So if you want to, uh, this, for example, is a, a good a footwear shop. Um, you can get inspired from here or made for baby, different shop. You can just spend time researching, depending on what is it called. This is, uh, this is my brand. And in here is where you buy the domain, which is basically uh, this, www gimmicogos.com. Otherwise, it would be called like Shopify store gimmicogos or something like that, and it doesn't look good. Um, so it's much better if you buy a domain. It's cheap. It's like I think I pay like seventeen dollar a year or something like that. Um, yeah, seventeen ninety five. So you can just go here when you have the name of the brand. You go there and you make sure that it's available, and then you can buy straight away. Also make sure uh, that it's available on social media when you have the name. For the theme, which is basically how the website is gonna look, uh, my thing is called the boot. I, I recommend it for uh, e-commerce. I think it's very nice. I saw a lot of brands using it. Um, there is also other, this is free. And there are other ones that you can pay, I think maybe $180, but it's just one time. And, and you can do more things as well. So it's totally up to you. 
the back end of the store is really, really important, which means basically when somebody, when a customer go to, to your store or a potential customer go to your store, you need to make sure that um, if they are leaving without purchasing, which it will happen a lot. It's very normal in e-commerce and it can happen just because somebody is looking the website, they like it, but they are, somebody called them and then get distracted and then they forget. It can be something like that, this is scenario. So what you need to make sure is that somehow you are gonna reach out to them to remind them about you and your brand. So if they, and this increase the sales like crazy. So, um, when somebody gets to your website, they check it out. If they are uh, already, you always need to have like some pop up, like to make them give you the email. And this is basically giving them the value or a discount or an ebook. There are different or a gift. So there are different ways to get the email, but trying to get the email as soon as they go to your website. And with this, you can build an email sequence with Clavio, which it will mean that as soon as they get the Clavio is very smart and it would know when somebody didn't do, didn't do the uh, purchase, we will send them an email uh, 30 minutes later, then 24 hours later. And those emails you can build um, with different, different strategies, but highly recommended to give them a discount because a discount is something that motivates a lot of people to buy. So if you can create an email sequence and in the last email give them a very good discount, um, it's gonna be um, very likely that they are gonna buy the like your product. The same uh, with SMS, uh, sending SMS, because some people don't leave the email, but they leave the uh, phone number. And then Facebook Messenger regard is the same thing, but in Facebook. So uh, it will send a message through Facebook to remind that if they have left something on the card. And then the upsells, this kind of sell, uh, this is very good for getting, um, for basically, um, I, getting more in money in one purchase. So instead of selling just one product, you will it will uh, show a pop-up which offer get another one and we give you 10% off. So what this does basically is uh, is gonna um, increment a lot the amount of money that a customer spend in our website. So this is really good because uh, getting a customer is expensive, that the customer acquisition can be expensive, but if we manage to get this into, instead of $50 purchase, 100 because they buy two, this is, this is very good. Then other apps I highly recommend you is a sales pop-up. This is for social proof. Basically, it's going to be a pop-up on the website, which is going to say, um, this person bought uh, this product in this location. So what this creates, is, um, like, and, I and I see this, that people, when they see this pop-up, they buy. And I, and I realized, because imagine that it's uh, one coconut cup. And then I see that the next purchases are going to be coconut cup, coconut cup, coconut cup. And then somebody buy bamboo cup. And then it's going to be bamboo cup, bamboo cup, bamboo cup. So you realize how people buy because they have seen that other people bought it before. So it's very interesting to see the psychology of um, the behavior of the customer. So a sales pop definitely helps. Then uh, I use Judgment for product reviews. Reviews are very important because people spend time looking at uh, the review to make sure that the peop other people are happy with their product. And then multi-currency if you sell in different countries. And GoAfro is an affiliate program marketing, basically it's a, for market to encourage um, either your customers or um, influencers that if they give this, they have a personal um, discount code, if they give it to a friend, they get a discount, they get a, a bonus. Or the, you, know, you can arrange different things depending on what works for you. But affiliate marketing works very well. Then let's speak a little bit about marketing. We got 10 minutes. Um, so, the best way that works for me for advertising are Facebook ads and influencers. So the first thing you need to do with marketing is identify who is your customer. 
we call it in marketing the customer avatar. And you can use later audience inside in Facebook. If you already have Facebook or Instagram, it will tell you in the insights a lot of information already about your customer, female, male, the age, where are located. Um, I, I recommend you to spend time on this because you really need to know who is your customer, where uh, where do they buy, which are the favorite brands, what do they like, more information you have about your customer, what are the problems, what are the needs, more you know about them, more you're going to be able to, um, to help them, to create a product to keep helping them. So for Facebook, uh, you will have to create an account in his, uh, Facebook uh, um, business, um, Facebook basically, and then make sure that you connect the pixel. For this, there is a lot, so many tutorials and Facebook help a lot with this. It's very easy to set up. And then my uh, top, um, I would say my top suggestions or advices with uh, Facebook ads is that start broad, which means uh, try to don't start with, even if you think that your product is for a 25 years old uh, woman, don't start with that, start broad, which means 18 to 65 plus, and then get more data, get data because you can be wrong. So start with broad audiences, then you can move when you have a lot of more information, more data you can move to look at like audiences which are audiences that are like similar to your uh, current clients or hold audiences which are the people that already visit your website or your social media and then it's, uh, always check your ad and make sure that you are optimizing scaling the good ads and pulling off the bad ones this is a lot of testing um I actually sometimes we teach other uh, focusing on this because it's, it's very big. Facebook world is very big, but that are my main tips for you today. And then with the influencers, uh, to start, I would highly recommend you to first know what is your outcome. Uh, if you are starting the brand, uh, the campaign. Um, Brand awareness would be for you. And brand awareness is basically to reach a, a lot of people. Um, if you can do with micro influencers, probably what you can negotiate with them is I give you my product for free. Um, and then you post a story or, or a post and recommending my product. And try to, it's better to get a lot of my micro influencers because people trust them more um, than the very big ones that are very expensive. You, if they have million followers that are very expensive and then because they promote a lot of product, people, people basically um, trust them less in the way that they are already like seeing them all the time promoting. So you need to find influencers that they, are, they have very good relationship with the audience and people really trust them. And then for that, you need to have first very good look, at, look in social media, that is a must because an influencer for them is very important, the reputation and the image on the social media. So they want to collaborate with brands that the values are aligned and the uh, yeah, and the social media looks good. Also make sure the influencers followers are your niche, your audience. When, once you have done your research and you know who is your customer, work with influences that have those customers, those audiences, because it doesn't matter how many followers an influencer has, if they are not your niche, if they are not your potential clients, because um, yeah, they are not gonna buy if they, if, if they are not um, the right prospects, right? Um, then you can offer them to uh, collaborate with an affiliate plan, which is going to encourage them to sell a little bit more so they get a commission. Um, and yeah, if you are going to hire a, a bigger influencers, like 100k uh, followers or more, you, I would recommend you to ask them for the audience inside to make sure that the audience is your audience. And then a tip is always, always, always ask for the price first in case they are bigger and they charge for it. And then you can negotiate um, like this. If imagine if you tell them the price and then it was less, so they are gonna be like, oh, awesome. So try to start with the other way, ask for the price and then you can negotiate um, maybe um, selling a little bit your values, your idea, what's your project. Some of the uh, influences, if they feel aligned with your business, they will help you out. 
Okay, so we go here, questions. I think we go a few minutes, two minutes. Any questions so far? Okay, let me see. What is the usual uh, price asking for 100K influencer? It really changed. It, uh, I wouldn't say mm, that there is a specific price for it, but um, when I have, in my experience, when I have asked for it, it goes between $1,000 to $3,000. And for the influencers, where to find them? Um, the best way is spending time on Instagram. Basically, when you know, uh, for example, my case, we uh, we are all about healthy food and 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 yeah, healthy mind, healthy food, uh, especially vegan recipe. So what we do is we go to the explore and we are always researching uh, reels or, or recipes of uh, different people. And then when we like something, we, we click and then we see our case and it's an influencer, it has 6,000 followers and yeah, and, and it's all about vegan, plant-based, gluten-free, healthy food. So that it will be, and then we see the engagement, good engagement, we will reach out to, to, to that person. And also when you click to somebody already, if you know one influencer that you like, that you like for your brand because it's aligned to your values and, and your, the client, the followers are like your ideal client, you can click suggestions uh, on Instagram and it will show you more um, Instagram pages profile similar to those, to that influencer. I don't know if you have seen it um, in the profile and the main page of the influencer or any person, it will show you in, in a suggestion. So it will come like a little bar, you need to click and then you will see so many and then you can spend time going uh, one by one and prepare like a message and then you can send it to all of them. Any other question? No more questions? If you can think of any Thing later as well. Um, feel free to uh, message me if you can think of any question later. Hi, Anne. Hi, um, I have a question. Uh, hang on, I'm just going to get a bit loud in here. Um, so I'm just ask, uh, wondering because I'm in network marketing, so I already have e commerce store and all that put it up for me, but I struggle a little bit to find my audience, I think. <laughs> Do you have Do any recommendations for that? Do you have already the Instagram page with followers and things like that? Or not yet? Yes, so I yes? have around 2,000 followers at the moment, yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, so I think there are a few things that you can do to identify where they one is go to insights, you know, insights in, in Facebook or on Instagram. Yeah. If you go to the insights, uh, there you can check, uh, it's gonna tell you the age and, and the percentage. So it's gonna tell you between 20 and, and 34 years old. 50%, imagine. So you already know the age because 50% is huge. And then it can tell you female, 85% and then 15% male. So you know already that it's a uh, female. Write all these things down. It will tell you as well the city, the, um, where are they located by country and by city, which is very important too. Um, and then um, cool. after that, you can also... Um, do a few things. One is going to your uh, going to those um, those audiences, those followers, and 
check which pages are the which uh, people are the following. Um, you know, like when you check following or followers, you can check there as well to get ideas of what they like. Um, so the same, you write down mm -hmm. the brands that they like. Um, and then what else can you do with um, to know if audiences is basically spend time getting to know them. Also, you can do a survey, like survey in exchange of something up $25 on the store and trying to ask them, what are your favorite influences and why? What are your favorite brands? Trying to get them know, uh, get to know them like that. Because if you have 2000, it's, it's a very good amount to actually understand them and, and make sure mm -hmm. that you get the main, um, yeah, the main idea is to find more of them, basically. So if you, if you already know all the clues, it will give you more clues to find more uh, people aligned with your following. But yeah, 2000 is great. Awesome, thank you so much, that helps a lot. Awesome. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, we finished for today. Anything you need, uh, feel free to reach me. Um, and yeah, thank you, thank you so much for today.